a very important day. Amen? As we all know for the United States of America, July 4th, the independence, 245th independence. And this independence, we had a lot of prophetic words for this independence day. The Lord has shown me in dreams as well. Uh, some of the things which I cannot share here. So we are believing for greater things to break through in the United States of America. Amen. Literally we are going to celebrate today. We have cake to celebrate. Hallelujah. And food and everything. But today is a very important day. Uh, as I told you, today marks one of the greatest moments in the history of the United States, I would say, spiritually. We are moving towards something greater. We are entering towards the release of the awakening and greater healing glory move of God. Amen. So I just wanted to share with you about our background. Our background to the United States, our calling started even before we got saved. We were Anglican Christians. We are just, uh, you know, normal Christians. Uh, but uh, one of the prophets from our town prayed and said when he was praying for us, he said, I'm seeing your family in the end time awakening and revival in the United States. At that time, we don't believe in prophecies or, you know, the Holy Spirit actions because we're just normal Christians. <laughs> but uh, we, don't, we didn't know that God will do it. But God led us to Israel first. And then through Israel, God brought us to the United States in 2008 for only sole purpose of praying and believing and working towards awakening and greater healing glory revival in the United States. So that's our journey. Uh, personally. Amen. Though we moved here, I didn't have any passion for America. I just came in obedience. But October 25th, 2010, right? 20, uh, 2009 was an amazing day. I would never forget in my life. It never happened before or after. Unbelievable impartation of God's heart to me for the United States of America. He just showed me in the picture how he loves America, why America is important, all these things just went like a film. And God imparted his heart for America to me. Since then, we have been involving so much in the prayer movement. And uh, how many of you know when the husband gets it, the wife will get it because we are one. Amen? So she's on fire for God for the United States of America. So it is so important. So that is our journey for believing for God's move in the United States. And so we are not ready to give up on anything for the United States. In fact, it is the it is the best is yet to come for the United States of America. Amen. So with that, I just wanted to also take us all from the beginnings of the United States. And that's so Im very important. So it's all started from the call the first charter. We can see here the first charter. So the first charter is so important. That's the time when uh, the British uh, king sent the first charter. Let me read it here. In 1606, King James one authored a document known as the first charter of virginia this charter assigned land rights to the colonies for the state the stated purpose of propagating the christian religion that's the sole purpose they were sent to this continent what is the purpose of the charter we greatly uh, commending and graciously accepting of their desires for the furtherance of a noble work which may by the providence of almighty god Hereafter, tend to the glory of his divine majesty in propagating Christian religion to such people as it live in darkness and miserable ignorance of the true knowledge and worship of God and may in time bring the infidels and savages living in those parts to human civility and resettled and quiet government. Do these our letters, patents, graciously accept of of and agree to their humble and well intended desires. This is the purpose of the charter that King sent them to the United States. Amen. So that is the reason we always declare the scripture that one nation under God. Right? But in 1966 or 7 is the first time the first uh, set of people arrived in the United States from, from the British. Of course, Spanish people were before that. But this is the first ever expedition that came in 1607. The expedition led by Pastor Robert Hunt arrived in Virginia Beach. That's where everything began. When they arrived in Virginia, the expedition, the expedition dedicated our country to the glory of God. Not only the country, the whole continent to the glory of God. 
they planted a rough woven wooden cross, which I'll show you. It's a replica, which they brought from England in the sand and they prayed. The first thing they did was dedicated this land, this continent, and they prayed and erected a cross. You know what the prayer is? Powerful prayer. America's covenant with God is the prayer. Hallelujah. This is the prayer. Reverend Hunt led the prayer. We do hereby dedicate this land and ourselves to reach the people within these shores with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to raise up godly generations after us and with these generations take the kingdom of God, not the church growth. It's part of the kingdom, right? Take the kingdom of God to all the earth. May this covenant of dedication remain to all generations. Hallelujah. Do you think God is going to forget this covenant? No. As long as this earth remains, and may this land along with England be evangelist to the world, may all who see, the, see this cross, that's what they erected there, remember what we have done here, and may those who come here to inhabit join us in this covenant and in this most noble work that the Holy Scriptures may be fulfilled. This is the prayer that they prayed and dedicated this land and erected this cross. It's a replica. Amen? So the covenant still stands. God never forgets the covenant. In fact, the Bible tells God remembers the covenant for thousands, thousand generations. Hallelujah. No matter who tries, the President of the United States or Congressman or Congresswoman or, or uh, my, you know, corporate corporations if they try to bring down this nation they cannot because this nation was dedicated to God that was the Bible that was the prayer they did amen so you know last um, last um, in the middle of the pandemic the Lord instructed me and my wife to go to 50 state capitals and Washington DC and pray for this nation just before the elections and by God's grace, we did all the 50 state capitals. And here we are in the picture, if you can see, Jamestown. Welcome to the first landing state park. That's what I'm talking about. This is where Reverend Hunt, they all came and landed Jamestown in Virginia. That's where the colony began. Amen. So it really rekindled our patriotism to this country. And our passion and our just went up to next level. Amen. So Jamestown. So I recommend this 13 colonies, at least 13 colonies. We are planning to take this tour in November again. Uh, people are going to join us. I recommend every intercessor, every parent, they can bring the children. They need to learn because the, 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 nobody is teaching this generation. 13 colonies, it's very important. This is the place, Jamestown. And then the Mayflower came in, the pilgrims. They came. After that, the, the, the first expedition came in 1607. The pilgrims came in 1620. So last year was the 400th anniversary of Mayflower's arrival. Amen? That is Jubilee. Eight Jubilees. Jubilees means what? It's a release. It's a breakthrough. God's restoration. God's release to destiny. So last year was an incredibly important year. So what did they do? They did the same thing, the Mayflower Compact. This was the compact that was written because there was no governing body, there was nobody to govern them, so they wrote a compact on the Mayflower. And this is what it is, the Mayflower Compact, William Bradford. You can find it in his journal. This is the compact, and this is a compact. In the name of God, amen, we whose names are underwritten, the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign Lord King James, by the grace of God of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, King Defender of Faith, wow, etc., having undertaken for the glory of God, the advancement of the Christian faith, and the honor of our King and country, a voyage to plant the first colony in the northern parts of Virginia, do by these presents solemnly and mutually in the presence of God and one another covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid and by virtue thereof to enact, constitute and frame such just, frame such just and equal laws, ordinance and, and, and acts 
constitutions and offices from time to time, I shall be thought most meet and convenient for the general good of the colony, unto which we promise all due submission and obedience. So this is what they did. And they landed in Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts. And I'm telling you, it's a very important place. That's where everything began. And they knelt down in Plymouth Rock and they knelt and prayed on, on the shores on a rock. And this is the replica of the Mayflower. They have it in Massachusetts in Plymouth. I'm telling you though, the, the atmosphere is so rich there, full of heritage. We are talking about secularism, all these things. Of course it is there, but the heritage. Amen? So you can still see the rock. That's what they say. This is the rock, you know. Uh, they knelt and they prayed. And the shores. So I don't want to show the video. Um, it's it's uh, it's, take, it's taking time. Um, so this is what they did. They 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 finished it by this. This words are amazing. We hold these truth truths to be self evident that all men are created equal. That is the statement of the founding fathers. Not only the Maple of Compact, after that, the Founding Fathers. This is their statements. We hold this. This is, a, this is a Declaration of Independence. This is part of the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, Without religion, there can be no virtue. Hallelujah. This, was, this is the statement of Franklin. I forgot his full name. Franklin, uh, his name is Franklin. I forgot the last name. One of the founding fathers. Without Benjamin Franklin, yes, there we go. Without religion, there can be no virtue. And without virtue, there can be no liberty. So they were so strong talking about the religion. Of course, it's not just religion, it's the relationship with Jesus Christ. They came to promote Jesus Christ here. We thought that, and we thought virtue, there can be no liberty, and liberty is the object and life of all Republican governments. Amen? So this is the bottom line, folks. But America has come so far away from this foundational truth. Now people are so angry with the church. They hate Christ. They hate everything. Why? What is America today? Amen? What is America today? And I'm going to and finally finish with what is your role in this. How can we respond? What is America today? It so clearly parallels uh, Israel and everything as we know. Ezekiel 16 verse 49 talks about it. It is so interesting, whatever we have seen in America 20, 30 years ago, that is what is produced what we are right now. Ezekiel 16, 49. Look, this, is what the, this, is what, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter and prideful, had pride, fullness of food, and abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. You wrote it here, God did not talk about homosexuality at all, about Sodom. So we see what was the condition that produced homosexuality. She and her daughter had pride. America was full of pride. Fullness of food, abundance. An abundance of idleness, pleasure, chasing American dream. Churches were so complacent. No teaching of sin and judgments. You know what Jesus talked about more? He did not talk about heaven. He talked about judgments. He talked about sin. He even is coming back to judge the nations. But in our churches we have lost it. It's become so complacent. An abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. This was the things that were happening 20, 30 years ago that produces homosexuality, that produces impurity, that produces everything else. And that is America today. We are seeing happening in front of our eyes. 
God is not holding any government leader accountable. He is holding the church accountable for it. How do you know? The same chapter in, in Ezekiel, I'm sorry, same book. If you go to chapter 22, God is laying out there. I'm going to bring judgment on you because you failed to do it. Who are the people who failed it? There's a list here. Let's read Ezekiel 22, 23 to 29. So though this is a celebration time, but I'm giving a sober message because we got to wake up. We got to wake up. Amen. Ezekiel 22, 23 to 29. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, say to her, that is Israel, you are a land that is not cleansed or reigned on the day of indignation. The conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey they have devoured. And precious, and precious things devoured the people. They have taken treasure and precious things. They have made many widows in her midst. Number one, God is coming against the prophets. Many of the prophets were not telling the truth. In Jeremiah's time, Jeremiah was the only true prophet. Everybody was prophesying falsely. So now the church has become a place of prophetic release of words tickling to our ears. Secret friendly churches, secret friendly prophets. So God is blaming on the prophets, it's not blaming on White House. Prophets, it's beginning with prophets. Then he comes to the priests. Her priests have violated my law. Who are the priests? Ministers of God. And yes, believers, we are all priests. So that means we are all accountable. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and unholy. That's the biggest problem in the church. The church is not able to separate herself. So much compromise. God is telling them they don't even know how to distinguish between holy and unholy. Whatever is in the world is in the church. Nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have hidden their eyes from the, my Sabbaths. They work seven days a week. So that I profaned among them. And then he goes on to the civil leaders. First the prophets. Then the priests. Now he's coming to the civil leaders. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey. Are they doing it? The politicians. To shed blood, to destroy people, and to get dishonest gain. Such a display of this entire words we can see in the government today. Amen? So God is just laying it down. And then, again, he'll go back to the prophets. Her prophets plastered them with untempered mortal, seeing both false visions and divining lies for them, saying, Thus says the Lord God, when the Lord has not spoken. How many of you know there's so many false prophets nowadays? And the Bible talks about it. So God is upset with the prophets, the priests, the princes. Now finally he comes to the people of the land. The people of the land have used oppressions, committed robbery and mistreated the poor and needy. And they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. So none of them are exempt. The church, the government, everybody collectively we have missed everything. Every section guilty. But primarily God is picking up the spiritual ones that is the church. We are responsible. You know, if you know the story of Bill Clinton, right? Bill Clinton was prophesying. He was, he was telling that I'm a Baptist. And he was holding a Bible all the time. He might have gone to come a couple of church services at least. Right? Do you agree with me or not? Did the people in the church preach about homosexuality with the full exposition from the Bible to Clinton? If, if they would have done it, America would not have advanced towards that lifestyle, which is not biblical. Right? So church has missed it. Still we missed it during Obama's time. Praise God we woke up. God brought Trump and everything shifted. Praise God for that. We are still maintaining the momentum of prayer. Glory to God. Amen? What is the motivation of all these things? The bottom line is love of money, covetousness. That's the bottom line. Every church, everybody's covetous. It's a love of money. 
which is the greatest disaster for America. Amen? You know, somebody told me this, I'll never forget. When Christianity started from, you know, Jerusalem, it was all relationship with each other, with God. Then it went from, from there to Rome. It became a religion, Christianity. And then Christianity went from Rome to the Great Britain, United Kingdom. It became like a social club, right? And when it came from Britain to America, it became a business enterprise, Christianity. I will never forget. I don't know who said this. It's very true. It's all about money. Everything is money here. They are running the churches as organizations. That's the reason they are running programs. Programs is for organizations, not for organisms. Churches are organisms. It's not organization. Amen? It's a living organism. So programs won't work for organism. <laughs> it's for organization. Amen? So sins of Sodom produced homosexuality. We read it in verse 49. Idleness, a lot of food, abundance. So compare USA today. Pride, fullness of food, abundance of idleness, even in the middle of COVID. They were getting more money than their regular work times. That's the reason they're not going back to work. Failure to care for the poor. These are all mistakes. So it's so important. What did Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 says? For you brethren have been called to liberty. You have been proudly singing. Liberty, the land of liberty, right? What did Bible say about it? Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. Which every American is guilty of. But through love serve one another. Amen. This is real liberty. Hallelujah. Are you tracking so far? Amen. It is so important. <clears throat> so what is the remedy? What is the remedy? This is God Bible tells the same chapter. This is the only thing that can bring solution. Ezekiel 22 verse 30 and 31. So all these things are happening. Disaster. Everybody is guilty. But. And so I sought of for a man among them. Who would make a wall. And stand and gap before me on behalf of the land. That I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Wow. This is the whole idea of this house of prayer here. Therefore I have poured my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. And I have recompensed the deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. But praise God, because of the prayers of the previous generations, now the prayer movement is at another level in the United States. Amen. So we are here in this place. This is a Mount Moriah Global House of Prayer to seek the face of the Lord for the United States of America, for Israel, and for all nations. Amen? So praise God. So this has to be the, the normal for every believer crying out for America. He's seeking for somebody to cry out for America. Cry out for America. Amen? So this is so important. That is what it is. So what happens? What is, how can we respond? How can we respond? The only way I can, I can, I can respond is, Lord, now let me ask you this question. Are you willing to ask God to give his heart for America to you? Amen. Let me repeat it. Are you willing to ask God to give his heart for America to you. It's a, it's a big asking. Do you know why? If you ask, he will give you. If he gives you, then you are responsible and you are accountable. Because much given, much required. Do you know everybody will be judged? judged everybody will be judged. Praise God for us, not condemnation, but we will be judged. So it's up to you. I'm going to lead you in prayer at the end. But it's up to you. Amen. So when we do that, when the importation came on me, I was not idle. We started city prayer ablaze all over Dallas Metroplex. Different cities. 
it started with cities in the Texas. When we moved to Minnesota, it became counties. When we moved back to Texas, now it is all states. We are raising prayer in 50 states of America and Washington, D.C. Amen? Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, there are benefits. It's not just God is just going to ask you things to do. There are benefits. Let me finish with that benefit, then we'll lead you in prayer. But we need to understand American church is in a critical situation. Do you feel like the church has lost its uh, savor? The U.S. church? Because by Jesus said in Matthew 5, if you, if you lost your, your savor, savor, saltiness, you know, then men will, be you, men will be trampling you. Right? Having a form of godliness in the American churches, so what's going to happen? The men will begin to trample. That's the reason such a hatred for the church now arising because the church has lost its savor being a salt and a light. Amen? So don't blame it on uh, people who are coming against the church, the governors wanting to shut down the church using COVID because men are getting ready to trample the church of America if we continue to lose the savor, becoming seeker-friendly churches instead of preaching the full gospel and telling the people about sin, bringing conviction and talking about judgment. Amen? Well, as I told you, this will be the benefit if God gives you this mandate to pray. It is for everybody. The Bible is telling very clearly the first thing God calls us to do is to pray for our authorities, right? When we do, when we stand in gap, when we cry out to God, this is the benefit. Ezekiel chapter 9, if you have time, go back and read this chapter. Here we see God is sending his angels and asking them to mark on certain people. I put a mark on certain people. Except those people, everybody God asked them to kill. Everybody, except the people who are, have a mark on their head. Verse 3. Now the glory of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherubim where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with white linen who had the writer's ink on at his side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry. Intercession. Or all the abominations that are done within it. Put a mark on those people. Okay? I'm going to finish in a minute. To the others he said in my hearing, Go after him through the city and kill everybody else. Do not let your eyes spare nor have any pity. Utterly slay old and young men, maidens and little children and women, but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark. And begin at my sanctuary. It begins in the church. Judgment begins in the church. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. Then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the courts of the slain. Go out and they went out and killed everybody in the city except those people who had a mark. Who are those people? The people who prayed for Israel. The people who cried out for Jerusalem. The people who cried out for the abominations, they were marked. That is the benefit. When the devil comes to destroy America through disease, sickness, marriage breakdowns, you know, in the modern terms if we can talk, Right? Or accidents or disasters or famine or whatever or debt. God says, don't touch them. I put a mark on them. They are praying for my country. Are you willing to do that? This is the benefit. Amen? How many of you want to receive the mark of God? We all have the blood of Jesus, but it's one more additional is putting a mark for those who are ready to cry out to God. And so this house of prayer is for that. You're welcome to come and pray. We have scheduled time of prayer. You can come alone and pray. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's stand in the presence of God. I'm going to ask you a question. Then I'm going to lead you in prayer. And you can pray yourself. It is so important. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Are you willing to ask God to give his heart for America to you this morning? If so, let's first repent for the times that we did not pray for America. That we did not pray for our authorities in the government. Go ahead and do that first. Repent for that. Then if you're willing to ask that, ask him. He will give it to you. I believe everybody who is listening to my message, you must be connected to the prayer movement or you must have just stumbled upon this video. It's not accident. Ask God to give his heart for America to you. So Father, we repent this morning for the times where they did not pray for this nation, for the, uh, for the leaders of this country, Lord. We repent, Lord Jesus. And Father, we ask you, rekindle our fire. Give us your heart for America to us, Lord, so that we will raise a prayer 24-7, crying out for this nation that you have covenanted, Lord, that they have covenanted with you, the founding fathers. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise this morning and we receive it in faith, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you have received it, do not waste it. Pray. At least you pray when you begin to eat. Before eating, we say the word of grace. Pray for Israel. Pray for America. Amen. When you do that, what are we going to see? It's going to be the greater glory, healing, revival, breaking through in the United States of America. It's a time of awakening, greater glory, revival. It's a time of breakthroughs. This is the greatest time that you could have ever imagined to live in the United States of America, the best is yet to come, not only for America, for every nation, for the church at large. This is the best ever time that you can ever live because the greater glory revival is going to sweep over the entire earth and you and me are a part of it. Glory to God. Amen. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord. Hallelujah.